Yo, what's good, YouTube, man? It's Gabriel, just another fan TV, man. Back at you another video at the content of the video. Go ahead and smash that like button at the content of this channel. Go ahead and subscribe, man. Look, all right, so I'm out here in Florida, man. Uh, my daughter's fifth birthday. Her party is coming up, you know what I mean? She likes to go to Orlando, so we back out here again, back at it again in Orlando, Florida, all right? So, um, yo, wish my daughter happy birthday in the comments, man. She's turning five years old. She's so excited, all right? So, but what we want to talk about is the fact that a healthy Ravens team is a scary Ravens team. And the fact that the Ravens haven't entered the regular season relatively healthy in, in, in quite some time, if we're being honest, right? Um, it seems as though since the 2019 season, the Ravens uh, injury luck has been pretty, pretty poor. You know, 2020, you have COVID, you know, you have everything that's going on with that. 2021, you have literally the, the worst injury luck in like NFL history, right? Um, I think the Ravens really did have the most injuries in NFL history, in NFL history that year. Um, and then 2022, you got J.K. coming back from last year. You got Gus trying to come back from last year. Ronnie Stanley trying to come back from, from that year. So it's like you had multiple guys, multiple important players just trying to make it make make their way back onto the field, right? Now, this year, now, you're not 100% healthy, right? It's football. You're never going to be 100% healthy. But this year... Um, it's really just Marlon and Tyus Bowser, right? Tyus Bowser was a guy that we kind of expected that, you know, he'll be coming on later on in the season, maybe here week five or so. And Marlon Hum Humphrey entry kind of popped up out of nowhere. But according to the Ravens, according to Marlon himself, it ain't too serious. He'll be back maybe week two, week three of this season, right? Hopefully there's no setbacks, but that's where we're standing at right now, right? So when I look at this team, when I look at the health situation, it's like the first time in the last, you know, really four years that the Ravens are entering the regular season without one hand tied behind their back, right? Without some big thing hanging over top of their head that's going to be like, wow, how are they going to overcome this? Uh, wow, they got to make some major adjustments here. So other guys got to step up majorly right here. Uh, because like I said, after week three, I expect Marlon Humphrey to be back. Um, and then, you know, we get Ty's Bowser back. That, that'd be great. But Ravens signs Davion Clowney. You know, they have... Uh, uh, um, Ojabo, they have Owe, they have guys where you're like, you feel okay at that spot, even if they're not Ty's Bowser, right? Um, so the healthy Ravens are, are, are scary Ravens, right? I mean, this is the AFC where it's loaded with talent um, up and down the conference, right? So you're going to need your best each and every week. And the Ravens are one of the best teams in the league right now, right? When you look at the skill position players, right? We have... Um, talent at wide receiver that that we haven't had um really that i can remember right i think a lot of people bring up maybe you know when they won super bowl 2012 and quan and um uh toy smith guys like that but i mean if i look at odell zay flowers rashad bateman Aguilar, duvernay you know what i mean like that's talent now we got to see the talent be put into the field uh be put to good use and um make the plays that's out there right so just because you have the name doesn't mean all of a sudden it's going to work right you know we got to be honest with that but you're in a position where it's like you feel really good at tight end you know the guy i was worried about was mark andrews because you know he came in kind of injured uh this last couple of weeks but yesterday he came back uh practicing he's been good um they said yesterday he said today he came out um a little bit later in practice whatever he did, did a lot of running you know get loose and whatnot um, but he seems to be fine. If he has to set out week one, I mean, that's not really an issue to me, but I think he's going to play. I think he'll be just fine. Uh, listen, you know, talking about injuries and health, and it always feels like a jinx and a double-edged sword, right? So it makes you want to, you know, knock on wood or something, you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, if you want to be real, the Ravens have entered the regular season at a disadvantage to themselves uh, multiple times over the last couple of years. And for the first time, everything's kind of falling into place i mean even last year you want to talk about the the, the lamar jackson contract drama right now lamar Jackson's has always been a, a ultimate professional ultimate pro he never really let the, he never really let that affect his play but to me and to a lot of people i could see visibly that lamar jackson wasn't having the kind of fun last year that we've seen lamar jackson have out there on the field right he wasn't having that kind of kid-like nature to play in the game of football that he loves that that i think is so obvious when something else is bothering you right um i thought that was obvious i thought it was multiple times where he looked 
not just upset that, you know, he wasn't playing well or the office wasn't playing well. I mean, it wasn't too many times that he was bad, and I'm not saying that. But it's just that he just didn't look like he was having a good time. But this offseason, I mean, you see him with T. Martin hanging out with, with, with his quarterback coach. That looked like a whole different relationship between what he had with James Urban. Him and Todd Munkin get along really well, a whole different relationship from what you saw with uh, uh, Greg Roman, right? And I'm not here to bash the old guys that's not here or whatever. You know, you, you move on and you hope that you upgrade in the process, right? The point being is that Lamar Jackson got it paid. He got his money. He settled. Um, he did what he said he wanted to do, right? Which was be the quarterback for the Ravens for the long term and long term future and bring a championship to Baltimore. Now he has to complete that second part of it, right? He's here for the long term. Now it's time to complete that championship, right? So um, the Ravens are in a spot where not only are they healthy physically, but mentally there is no cloud hanging above the team. Is this guy going to get paid? Is this guy's last year here? The only people that you could point to is Patrick Queen and maybe J.K. Dobbins, right? But Patrick Queen, he had a little thing where he um, he deleted some stuff from his Instagram account, whatever. But then he showed up the, showed up the work. No, you know, uh, uh, no excuses. Nothing wrong with that. He showed up the work, right, ready, ready to go. J.K. Dobbins, people won't say holding out, holding in. To me, he was taking. He's being extra cautious with his injury. He even said that, and that he was just going to come back when he was ready, which was going to be the middle of training camp, right? And he's back, no issue, right? So. This team has the chance to do very, something very, very special. And it starts week one versus the Texans. They can't overlook the Texans. Um, no matter how mundane, uh, mundane the game might be, it's still an NFL team. These are still guys who are professionals, right? Uh, I do love the Ravens going up against the rookie quarterback. I think the Ravens always have an advantage in that situation when that does happen. So CJ Stroud, I think, is going to be in for a rough and tough afternoon. But at the end of the day, you gotta make, you gotta go out there and you gotta play the game. You gotta play that full sixty minutes of football, right? Because if you don't, you could get beat. But with that being said, the Ravens, this team, is in a in the best space they've been physically and mentally, ready to perform, right? Um, and I did want to say that you know I, I I'm I'm proud of you, Raven Flock, right here, right? I put a poll out yesterday with that would. We're getting to the AFC Championship game, be a successful season for the Ravens. And I think it's over like 85% said yes, right? And I'm proud because that means you guys are in tune with um, of reality, right? You're not trying to shoot and say, oh, Super Bowl a bust. And if it's not, then the season is a failure, right? The Ravens have to get over a hub, win a couple playoff games. And if they do that, great. Get to the bowl even better, right? So um, the expectations are high for this season. Don't get me wrong, right? You know, just making the playoffs is not enough. You need to win a couple of games in there, right? But at the end of the day, this team has the talent. They got the personnel. And honestly, for the first time in a couple of years, I can say that I feel confident about the coaching on both sides of the ball. So when you got all those things mixed together, talent, personnel, scheme, and um, you got all that mixed together, you got a chance to be a really dynamic, a really dangerous football team. So I just wanted to say that the, the healthy Ravens are the scary Ravens, and they're starting this season healthy, which means they're starting this season very, very scary for the NFL, man. So uh, give me your thoughts in the comments, man. You know, uh, thank you guys for watching. Stay to this point of the video. Consider hitting that subscribe button, man. It's Gabriel, just on the Fan TV. I'm out.